Welcome to the Dolphin, sir. Are you checking in? Mike Enslin, one night. And how are we spelling that today? M-S-L-I-N. Uh, would you excuse me for a moment, sir? Sure. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dempsey, Mike Enslin's just checked in. Where is he? Uh, he's over at my desk. That's fine, Marie. I'll take care of it. Okay. Now, can you just sit here for a minute? Certainly, certainly. Oh, sure. Saturday the 5th. It'll just be a minute, Mr. Enslin. Good evening, sir. Can I help you with your bag? No. Very well. Mr. Enslin. I'm Gerald Olin, manager of the Dolphin. If there's anything that I can do for you while you're here, uh, dinner reservations, theater tickets, maybe a Knicks game, anything, just tell me I am at your service. Well, if I can just get the key to 1408, I can get out of your hair. Oh, we were thinking of upgrading you to a penthouse suite. 1408, please. Insistent, aren't we? Could you please um, humor me by coming to my office for a more private conversation? Sure. Come in. Make yourself comfortable. 1408, a smoking room? As a matter of fact, it is. Yes. Good. One less worry in the watches of the night. Care for a cigar? No, thank you. I don't smoke. Oh, this, yeah, that's uh, in case nuclear war breaks out. I, I gave it up a long time ago. It's part habit, part superstition. It's, you know, writer thing. You do drink, don't you? Of course. I just said I was a writer. The second sip. This say, 1939, exquisite. About 800 a bottle when you can find it. I appreciate the bribe, but I intend on staying in that room. How long? How long? My usual's overnight. Oh, I see. No one's ever lasted more than an hour. <laughs> Jesus, man. You ought to shave your eyebrows and paint your hair gold if you're going to try to sell that spook house bullshit. Otherwise, you'll scare the children. Why are you mocking me when I am genuinely, to the best of my ability, trying to help you? No, you're playing a little game. You're selling the mystique. But eventually, we both know you're going to give me the key, and I'm going to go up to the room, and I'm going to write my story, and your bookings are going to go up 50%. Do you mind if my little friend records our conversation? Take that as yes. Sir, you quite misunderstand the situation. Now, I know the Dolphin doesn't have the cachet of the Plaza or the Carlisle, but we operate at 90% capacity, always. And my concern here is not for the hotel. My concern here is not for you. Frankly, selfishly, I don't want you to check into 1408 because I don't want to clean up the mess. Now, hotels are all about presentation and fertile creature comforts. My training is as a manager, not a coroner. Under my watch, there have been four deaths. Four. After the last one, I forbade any guests from checking into 1408 ever again. The last one was David Hyde, orthodontist, manic depressive, slit his wrist, did a little self-surgery, turned himself into a eunuch, right? Yes. So you've done your homework. I'm a professional, too. Well, grievously, in its 95-year existence, the hotel has seen seven jumpers, four overdoses, five hangings, three, three mutilations. mutilations. Two stranglings. General Manager Gerald Olin is well-versed in the hotel's tragic history, dryly reciting the docket of carnage like a bookkeeper discussing his ledger. Well, you think you're clever, don't you? I know the game. Well, during your investigation, did you discover the 22 natural deaths that have occurred in 1408? Natural deaths? Ah. Didn't find out about them because the newspapers don't print anything about them. Hm. All told, there have been 56 deaths in 1408. 56? You're shitting me. You don't know anything. The causes of death in 1408 range from heart attack, stroke, drowning, 
Drowning? Yes, one Mr. Grady Miller drowned in his chicken soup. That's hard to do. How, how did he do that? How oh, indeed. Interesting. And it's all in here. I will let you have this and give you access to my office. You can take notes, put it all in your book. My only condition is that you do not stay in that room. You let me look at all that stuff? Hmm. I never did get that drink. Is good. Hmm. Here, keep it. Compliments of the house. I'm still staying. Damn it to hell! I'm sorry. All right, here. Here, read the godforsaken thing. I guarantee you, once you've read it, you won't want to stay in 1408. The first victim, Mr. Kevin O'Malley, sewing machine salesman. Checked into the hotel the first week it opened, October 1912. Cut his own throat, right? Oh, that's not the horrific part. Afterwards, in a fit of insanity, he tried to stitch himself back together using an old sewing needle before he bled to death. Easy, man. Look, Mr. Inklin, you don't have to stay in 1408. You can take photographs of 1404. It has the exact same layout, and no one will ever know the difference. My readers expect the truth. Your readers, your readers expect grotesqueries and uh, cheap thrills. The headless ghost of Mr. Eugene Rilsby still walks its abandoned farmhouse. The barking phantom of Mount Hope Cemetery. Direct quote. How do you know that? Your books aren't hard to find. They're on the bargain shelves of any paper bag novel store. <laughs> Full of cynicism written by a talented, intelligent man who doesn't believe in anything or anyone but himself. Guilty as charged. Hey, listen, this meeting's over. Why don't you give me the room? Oh, please, don't act like a hurt schoolgirl. In fact, you surprised me. Oh. You are not the hack and slash I expected. I rather liked the first one, the hardcover. Well, what was it called? Uh, the Last Walk? Long Road Home. The Long Road Home, yes. I rather thought the father was a bastard. Yeah, he was. Look, man, just give me the key. Mr. Inslee. Just give me the key. Listen, I stayed at the Bigsby house. I brushed my goddamn teeth right next to the tub where Sir David Smith drowned his whole family. And I stopped being afraid of vampires when I was 12. Do you know why I can stay in your spooky old room, Mr. Olin? Because I know that ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties don't exist. Even if they did, there's no God to protect us from them, is there? I can't talk you out of this. I think we've reached an understanding. Very well. Come with me. Most hotels have switched to magnetics. An actual key. That's a nice touch. It's antique. We have magnetic cards also, but electronics don't seem to work in 1408. Hope you don't have a pacemaker. General manager claims that the phantom in room interferes. I have never used the word phantom. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, spirit, specter? No, you misunderstand. But whatever's in 1408 is nothing like that. Then what is it? It's an evil fucking room. Mr. Oline, pouvez-vous lire et signer le papier, s'il vous plaît? Ah, oui. Très bien. Why don't the owners just close the room? The Usodo Corporation prefers to pretend there's no problem, just as they pretend there's no 13th floor. The room has got to be filthy. I mean, the sheets haven't been changed in, what, 11 years? No, no, no. We're very professional. 1408 
It's a light turn once a month. I supervise the maids work in pairs. We treat the room as if it's a chamber filled with poison gas. We only stay 10 minutes and I insist the door remain open. But still. A few years ago, a young maid from El Salvador found herself locked in the bathroom. She was only there for a few moments, but when we pulled her out, she was... Is she dead? No, blind. She'd taken a pair of scissors and gouged her eyes out. She was laughing hysterically. Your floor. Well, this is where we part company. This is as close as I get to 1408, unless it's that time of the month. See you tomorrow. Mr. Insler. Please, don't do this. I'll call you about those next tickets.